Good day of action in the Premier League on Saturday. Let's get Shaka Heslop's take on it with the winner of the day from the six games. Yeah, and what, roughly 24 hours after you saw Liverpool do what they did to Norwich, you wanted to see how Manchester City would fare against a tougher test in West Ham, who I thought had strengthened well this summer. Um, City made it look very easy indeed. 5-0, had a goal disallowed through VAR. Um, once they got over that initial 20 minutes where they found West Ham a sooner test than maybe they thought, it was. They just opened right up and looked every bit as good as, as you'd expect. Understand, understanding why, myself included, many think City uh, are going to win the league yet again. Is it as obvious to say that because your winner of the day scored five, that your loser of the day is the team that conceded five? Not, not necessarily. And, albeit, <laughs> I do have West Ham as my yeah, loser of the day, and I kind of mentioned it in talking about City. I thought West Ham did well this summer. And maybe, again, as a West Ham fan, I came into this season a little bit jaded, and you think, well, first... first uh, Match day one optimism and all that. But West Ham, once they went a couple down, everybody down twos. That's nothing you like to see. Uh, and again, as much as you come into this thinking, if we get a point out of Manchester City, it's a point well earned and probably more than you expect. You don't expect, not just to concede five, you don't expect to down twos. You're looking for something um, to, to, to build, uh, to use as a foundation. And there is nothing that happened for 90 minutes that Pellegrini can, can look back on and say, that's where we start. We can kind of segue from that because Watford were another one you thought about as your yes. loser of the day into the segue of the biggest surprise, the team that beat Watford. Yeah, I, outstanding performance on the road from a team that finished, what, 17th last season? 14 points behind 14 Watford. 14 points behind Watford. You go to Watford, Gracia, who's done a good job there, and you just wanted to see what Potts and this new manager in Potts and Brighton and Hove Albion uh, could do. It's not easy when uh, you have a club like Brighton and under a previous manager, such as Chris Hewton, have exceeded all expectations, and they had over a couple of scenes. All Brighton wanted to do was survive, and they did that. You bring a, a manager in, relatively inexperienced, particularly at this level, and that's the performance you get on match day one. I thought it was simply outstanding. Fills everybody with hope in, in going forward. I've been involved in relegation battles. They're not nice things to endure, whether you stay up or not. Um, but this certainly put Brighton on good ground looking forward to the rest of the season. Three points closer to safety. Now, when we got the list for you to fill in, I know you had some sort of dubiety. Do I put West Ham as the yeah. biggest disappointment? You've put them as your loser. So who is your biggest disappointment of the day? Well, strangely, the person or the thing oh. we've been speaking about <laughs> most after, after that game. Now, I continue to be a huge fan of VAR and what it brings to the game. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I prefer to have the right decision in four minutes than a wrong decision in four seconds. Yet, somehow... We are talking about VAR and the use of VAR in a game where City looked at their absolute best. We could talk about them all day long. If you're a West Ham fan, you could talk about the disappointments of, of, the, of their day all day long. Yet somehow we're talking about VAR. Absolutely ridiculous. Not that we're talk, talking about VAR, we're talking about VAR getting decisions right. Now, don't ask me how the game has descended into that much of a farce, but if that's what you're talking about, VAR, and how it's ruining your fan experience, then somebody needs to have a serious word with you. You done? Yeah. Four minutes, by the way, for four seconds. Come on, it's got to be quicker than four minutes. As a fan, as a commentator, I, I get the whole let's take time, but it's got to be quicker. I, what we saw today was quick. Compare, let's, yeah, let's, compared to what we've seen. Yeah, and, and, and I mean, I'm, I'm, just throwing out, I'm just throwing out four minutes just as, as <laughs> that's just what I say, right? I'll take the right decision in four minutes. Let's be honest. If I'm one nil, if I'm, my team is one nil up in the dying moments of a game, and we were talking about this earlier, I'm taking longer over a goal kick yep. than VAR took today over, over those decisions. Yeah, I'd, Yet, I'd, 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 I'd be yellow card. I'm telling you, I have done this time and time again. I will not get booked for it unless I, unless I really overdo it. I will take long in a goal kick and not get booked than VAR took on the, those decisions. Yet somehow people are saying that that ruined an experience, but 
My taking long over goal kick, I, mean, I, I, I really don't get that. I'm not trying to explain it. It's okay, but you get extra points for the use of the word rhetoric. Your choice? Best player. <laughs> it wasn't your choice. Who was your best player? Had Raheem Sterling. Had to be. Harry Kane, a close second, but a hat trick, I mean. Um, hat trick, and then, um, listen, I know he had one ruled out, well, an assist ruled out. Raheem Sterling was simply unplayable today. Um, and up against Fredericks, who matched him for pace for the mm -hmm. most part. But I thought you saw Raheem Sterling and the improvement and maturity of his game. Up against somebody who was just as quick. Raheem Sterling, just far too tricky, far too wise for, for, for Fredericks, and, and just simply far too unplayable. You know what impressed me most about Raheem Sterling today? Because last season on FC, quite a lot, you spoke about Sterling getting into good positions, you as in everybody, um, but maybe his finishing was, was mm -hmm. the issue. He was so clinical today, and he's beaten out Harry Kane to your best player today, who got two. Kane looked a little bit rusty at times in, yeah. in the first half with Herrera, but just outstanding. So, Raheem Sterling is not a finisher. He's, he's not an out-and-out centre forward. And the, just the mere fact that we're standing here comparing Raheem Sterling's mm -hmm. finishing with Harry Kane's mm -hmm. says a lot about his own, own improvement. Because Kane's a world-class finisher. He, he is. There are few in the worst game who are as, as good as Kane. Now, if I, if I am advising Raheem Sterling, I'm saying to him, absolutely yes. Spend a little bit more time on the training ground. Tidy up your finishing. But when you compare where he was to where he is now, when you look at just his raw numbers, it's this, you asking every single player, well, to Lionel Messi, what do you do or how can you continue to improve? Asking the team of Raheem Sterling is not being disrespectful to where he is now or how good you think he can be. That's just the nature of, of the game, of the player. You're trying to improve regardless. I think Raheem Sterling continues to prove that he is one of the most unplayable players in the league and will only continue to get better. Last chance to add something about VAR? No. Stop talking about it. Okay, you, that's you told. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.